Hi, Cancer. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for October of 2022. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julie Mijas in San Francisco, California. Well, Cancer, this month's horoscope is mostly about your local neighborhood events, things happening in your home and work life, and your personal creativity. If you have a wide variety of questions from this horoscope, it wouldn't be surprising, and you can find answers to any and all of them in a natal and transit reading. You'll find a link to help you book that in the text that comes with this video. Well, let's jump in. October begins with moon and mercury activity and finishes with wonderful relationship stuff. Um, and I want to start actually with the full moon of October 9th. And as you can see, it lands in your 10th house of career. So this is the work activity I was talking about. Now, full moons tend to bring high emotions. This one's in Aries, so it could be a little bit incendiary and it's landing in your house of career so i think it's really important not to blow up during this full moon there's a lot of um, complexity in this moon it's fairly dramatic uh, it does have big emotions we're calling it arguments that wound dialogue that heals and you get to be the decider of that especially if you know that this moon is coming and you're prepared right but if this came upon you unawares, you might find yourself having an argument with your boss or with the people who work under you or just, you know, stirring up some kind of big like tantrum uh, uh, at work. And we don't want that. Right. So um, be warned. October 9th is a day to watch out for. But if there's something that you've been wanting to say, um, it might be the right time to say it if you can figure out how to do it diplomatically so that's the dialogue that heals part uh, especially when it comes to your home life because this moon does span the axis of home fourth house with the sun and venus here and career tenth house with the moon and chiron here <clears throat> there is help from saturn which is uh, bringing a grounding influence and a more objective view that could help you if you do get into a conflict with somebody. There's probably somebody else very close by in that same environment who can help you um, to, you know, handle your, your disagreement. Um, so now, you know, we've got great relationship stuff to roll out later in the month. But um, right now, I'm going to fling the conversational ball over to Julia, because Julia, I know you've got news about Mercury and Mars first. Yes, I do. Hey there, Cancer. The good news is that Mercury is going to go direct, thus ending its retrograde cycle that plagued us for much of September very early on the, in the month on October 2nd. So this whole Mercury retrograde cycle has happened in your third house. This is the house of siblings, neighbors, communication in general. So you've been dealing with lots of miscommunications over the past few weeks, and those are about to clear up soon, which is really nice. This uh, These miscommunications could have especially affected you in your local community, or as well as uh, any relationships you have with your siblings, brothers, sisters, as well as cousins. Um, then, by October 10th, this direct Mercury is going to enter your fourth house, where it's going to stay for most of the month. The fourth house is the house of your family and home, two things that are so dear to you, Cancer. And wherever Mercury is, is where we can be very preoccupied. So you might notice that you're connecting a lot more with your relatives during the cycle, especially your parents. If you live with anybody, you guys might be communicating a lot more, socializing a lot more in general. 
And your mind could be very preoccupied with your domestic life. Maybe you're strategizing about how to improve your home or where you want your next home to be. And since the fourth house rules your past, you could be thinking about a lot of things that have happened a long time ago. Then on October 29th, Mercury's going to enter your fifth house but at the very end of the month, which is the house of your children, the house of fun and games, um, the house of creativity, where you're going to be spending a lot of time thinking and strategizing and perhaps in, uh, communicating more with your children too. And we're going to really cover that cycle in a lot of next, uh, in a lot of depth next month. So definitely uh, listen to our next month's video to hear more about that. Now, while Mercury is going direct, another planet is going retrograde this month. So we're not at a retrograde season yet. Okay. Uh, Mars, the planet of action and activity, goes retrograde about once every two years. And it's going to start this month. So Mars is slowing down in the sign of Gemini. It's getting slower and slower and slower until it pivots retrograde at the very end of the month on October 30th. This is all happening in your 12th house. The 12th house is a very hidden house. Um, it's the house that rules your subconscious. It's a spiritual and altruistic place, but it's also a place that can have a lot to do with self-sabotage if we're not being aware. So Mars is the planet of action and activity. So as it's slowing down and going retrograde at the end of the month, um, you could find yourself kind of getting annoyed or irritated about stuff that may have happened a few weeks ago or a few days ago or a few months ago that all of a sudden hit you out of nowhere. Because this is the house of the subconscious, you know, we might not always be in touch with our 12th house planets right away and very directly, but they definitely make themselves known at weird times. Uh, Mars in the 12th might also mean that you're a lot less inclined to sort of show what you're upset about to other people, you might be keeping it more to yourself, um, which is why it might just kind of get stored in the back of your mind and kind of come out at random weird times. Now, it's important while Mars is retrograde in your 12th to try to be as above board with your actions, which are represented by Mars, because especially during a retrograde season, if you're doing anything sneaky or shady, acting behind other people's back, it will definitely come out. So just try to be as transparent as possible. And we're going to have a lot more to say about Mars retrograde in your 12th in coming videos. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for those. And then finally, Venus starts the month in your fourth house of family and home. This is a very dear house to you because, you know, it's naturally ruled by cancer, the sign of family and home. So wherever Venus goes, we have more pleasure. We have more harmony. We might even have a little luck. So you have a little luck this month in making your home a more wonderful place for yourself. Yourself, whether that's decorating it, buying some, some appliances or new things that make you enjoy your domestic sphere more. Uh, it's also a great time for connecting with family members, especially since you've been having miscommunications with your siblings and cousins. Venus in the fourth house will definitely give a boost to your relationships with your family. And then on October 22nd, Venus will be exactly conjoined the sun while she's moving direct. And we call that relationship rapture day. It's a time of of more progress in relationships, kind of greater understanding that can lead to forward momentum. So if you're in a romantic relationship, this can be a time where you have some progress in terms of how you feel like family to your partner, because this is all taking place in the fourth house. Or maybe you're having some progress with, with maybe having conversations about moving in together, or if you're already together, how to sort of make your home life much more satisfying and how you can feel more like family with your partner. Uh, then on October 23rd, Venus is going to enter your fifth house. Venus loves being in this house. It's the house of dating. So for the single cancers out there, you know, who are having these relationship insights about maybe their next relationship, how they can move forward with a partner in, in, in a sense of family and in a sense of home, um, this is going to be a wonderful time for them to get out and start dating. Uh, and Venus is going to be here in for the rest of the month too. And if you are in a relationship, then it can be a time of just kind of going out on more dates with your partner, making it feel sort of like the early stages of the relationship, which is the sort of fun dating period, the honeymoon period kind of comes back a little bit. It's also a great time if you have uh, children to really enjoy your relationship with them as well. Mm, so true. Well, I want to talk about the season for a moment. The sun begins the month in Libra as 
um, and spends the first two thirds of the month uh, in Libra, which really underscores the whole relationship theme of uh, of this fall. And um, and that's in your fourth house. And so hopefully you've uh, already had a lot of high quality attention that you're pouring into your home sphere uh, in the first two thirds of the month. Wherever the sun goes, we want to pay attention because um, it's good to shine the light of consciousness in whatever area of life the sun is traveling through because it helps things to flourish in that area. So uh, the sun begins in your fourth house, home and family, and then as it changes seasons and moves into Scorpio, it passes over into your fifth house, which Julia was just describing as a house of fun and pleasure and play and games. It's also about love affairs, um, sex had for the fun of it, um, uh, short trips, you know, trips to Vegas. Um, entertainment of all kinds, and it's very much a house of creativity and self-expression. So when the sun moves here, you might put some high quality attention on, for example, your personal brand, uh, asking yourself if, um, if how you dress and express yourself is a reflection of who you really are on the inside and how you can behave more authentically. So, um, yeah, I mean, the fifth house, it's fun and games, but it's also not all for just fun and games. It has a deeper meaning as well. Um, so, um, a wonderful thing happens then right around here too, on the 23rd, Juno, which has been retrograde for several months, goes direct right here on the 23rd and there you can see the little red rx symbol is gone so juno is now direct she has been putting us through a relationship retrospection period for several months now she does this every year but not every year will it happen in the same sign this time it's been in pisces and happening in your ninth house which is a house where we um we look for meaning in life. We craft or create a worldview that explains life to us. And so with Juno retrograde here, you've probably really been inquiring into the deeper meaning underneath your relationship and asking yourself if your relationship aligns with your spiritual value system and do you and your partner mesh on a spiritual level. And that would largely be because Juno has done her job in Pisces. However, when she goes direct October 23rd, it is going to begin to untangle itself, sort itself out, smooth itself out. And um, by a wonderful coincidence, on October 25th, we have the second moon of this month, which is a new moon. Sun conjunct moon is always a new moon, therefore a new beginning. And this particular one is also an eclipse. A moon, a lunation, whether a new moon or a full moon, uh, becomes an eclipse when it happens in proximity to the nodes. And right here is the south node in the same sign as the moon and sun. So a solar eclipse is a time when we're forced to look at our shadow, most particularly through our behavior. Look at the behavior that we evince that maybe isn't our favorite, <laughs> not the best look, right, on us. And, um, and yet this eclipse has so many positive features. It has uh, Venus is right here with the sun and the moon. And they form a beautiful trine over here to Juno, which, as I just pointed out, is uh, has just finished her retrograde, uh, retrograde and retrospection period. So this moon could be a wonderful time for everything to just come pouring out. We're calling it Confessions, Acceptance, Healing. And that's because... If you felt the urge to be really, really honest during the full moon in Aries on October 9th, it might have been a better idea to hold your tongue uh, because that would allow you to wait 
for this eclipse right here. And it's funny, I just feel funny even saying this because an eclipse is not usually the sort of thing that I would say like, wait for the eclipse and then speak your truth. Um, that would sound like a recipe for disaster, but actually this moon is really good for that because it's got this beautiful trine. Juno trines all three of these planets, moon, sun, and Venus, and there's no stress in this eclipse. The only stress is that the moon is in Scorpio. So this moon is craving intimacy. Juno has it to deliver. Venus is on board. And this could be a really good time for you to just, you know, tell your partner whatever you've been holding back and find out what your partner's been holding back and approach it with a warm, compassionate heart that's ready to accept whatever happens and watch the intimacy in your relationship deepen. Well, <clears throat> an eclipse season is going to continue next month with a lunar eclipse, and we'll be telling you about that when we get there. Well, Cancer, you can find out so much more about this month's moons in our October 2022 news playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. You can also dig around uh, for the July playlist where you can find out more about Juno Retrograde there on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you would like to visit our website, PandoraAstrology.com, you'll find that these moon videos are on the forecast page. And... Um, and then also you can get that reading in the readings tab. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.